Hey guys, welcome back. Let's jump right in on this adorable bunny design by putting some nice blue sky and some grass down on this Santorini stone. This design is really cute and it's perfect for Easter, but it's also perfect to carry us through spring. It's kind of general enough that it fits for any time in the spring. I do want to give you a heads up that there are a couple of spots in this tutorial where I freeze the screen temporarily and put a little flashing pause sticker in the video so that you know that you can pause the video to check out the design. I noticed that the chalk pencils I used to line out the design were not as visible as I had hoped so I wanted to make sure that you could stop the video and draw the design out on your own stone. Now let's get started bringing this little guy to life. We're gonna start with this Martha Stewart sponging dauber tool and we're gonna create some clouds. To do this, I get a fair amount of white paint on the sponge and then I dab it on an index card or paper, anything, paper plate, anything that's not the rock until you just have a very little bit and you start dabbing it onto the rock. So this is gonna take several layers. You do have to kind of let it dry in between, otherwise you'll start moving the wet paint around but it gives the sweetest, softest looking clouds and it just is so cute. So like I said, this is a process. You're just gonna keep going from paint, letting it dry, sponging it on, and just keep repeating that process until you're happy with the shape of the clouds and also the softness of the edges of the clouds. Now I'm gonna take a blue chalk pencil to outline the bunny. And don't feel bad if you don't quite see him taking shape yet. It took me getting paint on and adding some of the details and then he really came to life. But you will see the video pause here so that you can take a look at the general shape and potentially copy that down onto your stone. Next, I'm gonna take some white gesso to base coat the bunny design. And I'm doing this because the bunny is straddling several different colors. So he's in the blue, the green, the clouds, and I wanna try and even out how the paint coverage for the bunny is going to be so that there's not you know, lines of green and the clouds and the blue showing through. So I've just recently switched over to this Liquitex brand and I really like it. It gives really good coverage. And so this is the base coat for the bunny and then we're gonna move on to mixing some gray paint because I can't find my darker gray paint. So I'm gonna take my light gray paint and add a couple of dots of black paint and mix it up. And then I ended up adding a little bit more black to this because it wasn't quite as dark as I wanted. So this is something you can do with any of your colors. If you need to lighten or darken them, you can use white paint to lighten things or um, with this gray, I'm using the black to darken it up a bit. And now we're gonna go ahead and fill in the bunny. Depending on your paint coverage, after you get this first coat on, You'll probably need a second coat. I did two coats of the gray so that I had solid coverage of our little bunny. Now we're gonna start adding some details to the bunny. So I'm gonna take this cute bright pink and we're gonna add a little upside down kind of rounded triangle for his nose. Next I'm gonna take this Sakura Pigma fine line paint pen 
and start outlining the bunny and adding some detail. This is the part where the bunny came to life for me because it was adding his little hands and his little feet and his toes and it just really kind of brought him to life. So I got a little overzealous with my Pigma paint pen and some of my lines got a little thick. So I'm gonna do a little bit of color correction here by coming back with the white gesso and covering over where the black pen was a little bit too thick. And then I will come back with the light blue paint on the blue side. And then here I'm adding a little bit of gray on the inside because it got a little thick. Now this is just fading in. The blue paint, I'm getting the edge and then kind of fading it out to the rest of the sky. Next, I'm going to line out a butterfly above his little nose and then two tulips on either side of the bunny. Using the same pink that we used for his nose, I'm gonna fill in the wings of the butterfly and kind of the main part of the tulips. And this will take a couple of coats, sometimes even three, because this one is an enamel paint that is kind of like a semi-gloss. So you can really see the brush strokes and it's a little bit lighter. So I did have to go over it a couple of times to get that nice, vibrant, bright pink. Using the same green that we used for the grass to add stems and leaves on the tulips before I paint the tulips pink. Next, I'm gonna add some bright yellow accents to the centers of the tulips and then some light pink accents to the middle of the butterfly wings. Before I add those accents to the butterfly wings, I am going to use the Pigma pen to draw the butterfly body, the head, and the antenna, and then outline it first, and then I will add the pink accents to the center of the wings. Now I'm going to take 
take the Sakura Pigma pen and add some definition to all of the design by outlining the flowers, the stems, the leaves. And then I'm gonna add some accents to the grass where it kind of looks like sprigs of grass to give that a little more definition as well. Now we all know it wouldn't be a J-Rocks tutorial if we didn't add some glitter paint. So I'm going to take the Folk Art Extreme Hologram Glitter Paint and add that to the lighter areas. So the light pink on the butterflies and then the yellow in the tulips. And then I'm going to take the pink glitter paint and add it to the tulips and then the darker part of the butterfly wings. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that alert bell so you don't miss future uploads. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I appreciate you stopping by to watch. See you next time.